online. We are so excited that you've gathered to be with us today. I am Pastor Keeney Morley. I'm one of the senior pastors of Net Church, and I have with me... And I'm Peter Giles. I'm one of the pastors at Net Church, Sitton Broad. It's so great that you could be with us today. You know, church is going to be a little bit different over the next few weeks, but I want to encourage you. The church is not about a building or a location. It's about God's people gathering together. So let me encourage you to prioritize logging in every Sunday and joining us in church online. Absolutely. Turn up your volume, stand up in your living room or wherever you are, plug in your headphones and make sure we are about to worship Jesus together. So all across our locations, wherever you are, we're going to come into the presence of Jesus right now. Come on, let's worship Net Church.
on you as you sing more than enough. More than enough for me. Maybe for me, it won't prosper. Cause when the darkness falls, you won't feel it. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And oh my God, we never fail. Oh my God, we never fail. Cause I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Cause I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord
is our God. How great is our God. Thanks, guys. That was incredible. Welcome to Online Church. It's so, so good to have you tuning in with us this morning. And this morning is our Thanking the Women's Day service. At Net Church, we don't just do Mother's Day. We do Thanking the Women's Day where we thank our, our grandmothers, our aunties, the nurses in the hospital. We want to honor every single woman in our home, in our community. So this morning, we honor you. And something we did in the week, we asked you to shout out women that you just want to honor. And so Andrew's going to kick us off. Yeah, Rachel Holloway, we want to shout you out, or Terry Leffer wants to shout you out. We want to say thank you for your ability to serve across departments. We want to thank you for how you care for your family and how you go the extra mile. Kissinet, this is for you. The Little Angels team want to say thank you so much. You're a woman full of faith. You're a woman who loves her family passionately and is willing to take extra responsibility. And Sonia, Sonia from the Tamil Church, we want to say despite the challenges that this year has already thrown at you, you're a consistent, reliable woman and we want to say thank you for that and we want to honor Bumi Peters Bumi you are working two jobs just to make sure that your children have everything that they need we honor you this morning Bumi we want to honor Sherry Hewitt who not only is an incredible woman of God but there is no person that she will treat differently every single person that Sherry comes across no matter the color of the skin no matter the education no matter what she will show the love of God and so Sherry we want to honor you this morning and Tolu from Woolwich Tolu Andy wants to really honor you Net Church Woolwich want to really honor you thank you for serving so hard so diligently you are incredible women be honored this morning every year we do some special announcements, some special honours, and we want to this year thank Okja, Okja Valdiviso from our Dartford location. We want to say you are an incredible woman. Those around you experience the joy of God when they are around you, so thank you so much for what you do on a Sunday mornings in our crush team, but also during the week in Little Angels. We honour you, we thank you for who you are. And we also want to honour Odin Eke. Odin, you are a powerhouse for God. We just love you so much. Everywhere you go, everything that you do, you carry the presence of God. You carry the authority of God. You are such a loving, incredible, massive-hearted woman. And we just want to honor you this morning. And we also know that you go to the gym every single morning before church. So we know that you are not a woman to be messed around with, but you are a strong woman. And so we have gifts for you, Okja, and for you, Odin, that we are going to be dropping to your house this afternoon, straight after church. These gifts are going to be at your door. We just honor you this morning. How great is Church Online? I hope you're really enjoying this service. We are certainly enjoying being able to connect with you in this way. We're going to come around our time of offering, and obviously we're not in the same building, so it's going to be done a little bit differently today. You know, in the midst of crisis, we either run or we rise. Uh, Offerings could easily drop in difficult times like this, but Roy and I, we are believing that actually we are not going to be faithless, we're going to be faith-filled that actually offerings will increase because we're going to give to God in faith, believing that God is the God who does great things. He provides. You know, Jesus is our good shepherd. And the Bible says, freely you have received, freely give. You know, we have many things in our hands. We have uh, bread in our cupboards. We have food that we can share with each other. As we come around the offering, let me really encourage you. Make sure you set up a monthly standing order. Slides are going to come up across the screen. If you're from Dartford, the Tamil Church or Woolwich congregation, make sure you take down the bank details of the first slide so that you can set up a monthly standing order. And also, like Roy and I, you can also give every week on top of that. And there are Monza details. There is how to text. There will be information about how you can give via our website. You can go to our front page and find out how to give online. There are many different ways you can back transfer. But please, church, let us not be slow to give this morning. Let us be those that say, you know what, I might be at home, but I'm going to give to the Lord this morning. So the band are going to play. The slides are going to come across. And if you're from Net Church, sitting born, make sure you wait until your details come up, that you make sure you give to the right account. Because we know every church, every one of our locations needs to make sure that their bills are covered, that their leaders are paid, that nothing falls to the ground. Come on there, church. Let's give.
we are going to have a time where we're going to pray because prayer is so important, isn't it, Andrew? It's crucial at this time. And I don't know whether you're sitting at home right now and you're faith-filled or you maybe are full of fear, but I want you to know that the presence of Jesus changes everything, doesn't That's it? That's so true. And though physically we may not be together, we know because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, we, his church, are together. So we want to encourage you to come to our prayer night. You can join via our Facebook pages, Net Church Dartford or Net Church Sittingbourne. Click on the link. You can also join via our website. And we, together, as his church, are going to pray. Yeah, this Tuesday, 7.45 till 9 o'clock, let us really encourage you. You don't even have to leave your home. You can just click on the Facebook and join us, and we're going to be really praying. We need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for the globe. We need to pray for our government. We need to pray for your families. You need to pray for your neighbors. So we're going to come together, and uh, we're really going to pray. So let me really encourage you. Put a little reminder right now on your phone. So 7.45, that you will even do it at 7.30, so that you can get there early. Get yourself ready, get your laptop up, get the TV uh, tuned in, whatever else you need to do, because we're going to pray. Maybe we should pray right now, Andrew. Let's do that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are in control. God, we thank you that you are a God who brings healing, who brings wholeness. God, we see time and time again, Jesus, where you are, God, there is hope. And God, you are our living hope. So we pray for every single person in our country and Mm. beyond right now. God, we ask that the peace of God would rule our hearts. God, we ask that we would fix our minds on you, and in that we know your promise is to keep us. Jesus, we pray for everyone right now who needs healing. We ask, God, that you would be healing, that you would be restoring, and God, for every Christian that is hearing this, God, we would know that you are with us, and you are. if you are with us, then who can be against us? Thank you that we are more than conquerors because of what you've done. We pray for our leaders right now. We lift up Boris and the government. God, we pray that they would be wise in the decisions they continue to make. Mm. But God, over and above that, we know that you are supreme. You are an authority in our lives. And because of that, we can cling on to you, hold on to you, and therefore we fear leaves. So thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Maybe you're sitting at home right now and you've never watched church before. You've never uh, been to church, but you're just watching this uh, service. Let me really encourage you. If you're full of fear right now, Jesus wants you to know him. He is called in the Bible the Prince of Peace. And when you call him into your life, he can bring peace where there is absolute chaos. He can make storms calm. He can bring peace into crisis. And so we are really really praying that you would, at some point during this service, maybe after you've watched this service, you go somewhere quiet. Maybe it's your room. You shut the door and you can just speak to the Prince of Peace. I promise you, you will feel the presence of God. He changes everything and uh, i'm so excited because this morning we've got an amazing speaker haven't we yeah it is our absolute privilege to welcome up our pastor to share the word of god he is a man full of faith he is a man full of the word of god he is a man of integrity net church you need to grab your notebooks you need to grab your phone notes section you need to open that right now because we are going to welcome to the stage pastor peter judd come on big round of applause for the band Thank you guys. How good was that? I am so excited about that moment that we can come together and pray as a church. You know, even though we can't meet physically together, we are still doing church together and God is still with us in this moment. So it's exciting, isn't it? You know, and I find it amazing that even though we can't physically meet, that actually we can still come together as church, that God is still with us and we can still be encouraged and we can still encourage each other. So I'm I'm excited. And you know what? The added bonus is this, that this morning I get to speak to the whole Net Church family. No matter where you are, if you're in Dartford, Sittingbourne, Woolwich, whatever your house is, I get to speak to you this morning. So I'm excited. I'm believing that God has got something to say. I'm believing God wants to encourage us. I'm believing God wants to build us up. And so I just want to share with you for the next few moments something that God has laid on my heart. And I want to read something from the Bible to you, if that's okay. So grab your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. And while you're there, also flick through and find um, Psalm 27, starting in verse 13. So let me just read this to you. Hebrews chapter 10 says this, starting in verse 35. Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Psalm 27, David says this, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And I want to talk this morning about confidence. Before we do that, let's just pray. Let's believe that God is going to speak to us right, right where we are, right where you're sitting, whether it's your front room, the kitchen, that God is going to speak to you this morning. Father God, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, that you have the ability to speak so clearly into our lives, to encourage us and to change us. And Lord, I pray this morning as we come around your word together, that we would go away changed, that we would know more of you, that we would experience your presence and your love in a greater measure. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, I pray. Amen. The title of my message today is Confidence is Key. Confidence is Key. And you might be asking yourself, why is confidence such a big deal? Does it really matter if I have confidence? But the truth is this, that when we are facing situations that maybe we don't understand, when we're facing situations that we can't control, when we're facing times of uncertainty, just like we are in the world today, our confidence can become undermined and it can begin to diminish. And the truth is this, if we allow our confidence to be robbed, if our confidence begins to fade away, it changes the way that we live. It determines the way that we deal with situations. It determines the way that we respond to things when we don't know what to do. And I want to tell you this, that confidence is a powerful thing. When we have confidence, it enables us to do things. Confidence is one of the greatest things that an athlete or a or boxer can have in their arsenal. You see, the thing is, if you have confidence, you don't need to be the fittest. You don't need to be the fastest. You don't need to be the strongest. You don't need to be the greatest. But when you have confidence, you can begin to undermine, undermine your opponent and you can begin to get inside of their head. I, wanna, I remember when I was, I was growing up that the greatest, one of the greatest boxers of my generation was, was Mike Tyson. But the truth is this, he was never technically the greatest boxer. You see, he was a, a brawler, he was a street fighter. And when you looked at the statistics, he was often the underdog. But he had this air of confidence. And the reality is that Mike Tyson won many of his fights before he ever stepped in the ring because he had such an air of confidence that he would get into the head of his opponents and he would defeat them before they ever threw one punch. You see, Mike Tyson had a confidence. And I want to tell you this, that when we have a confidence, then there are things beginning to change in our lives and we can do things that we couldn't do before. I don't know if you've ever had a time in your life where your confidence has been knocked. I don't know if you've ever had your confidence knocked by maybe what someone has said about you or what people have spoken over your life. But I remember when I joined the fire service nearly 20 years ago, when I walked into that job and I, I started on my, my 16-week recruit course, I was a confident person. I thought I had confidence. But it wasn't long into that recruit course that my confidence began to be undermined. I found myself in this boot camp where there were people shouting at me and ordering me around, telling me that I was worthless, telling me that I didn't deserve to be on this course. And I found my confidence diminishing. And I got to the point where I thought to myself, I can't do this. I, I can't do this. I need, to, I need to have my notice in and leave. But it was only because someone sat me down and said, look, this is just a game that you've got to play. This is just, you have to go through this game. You have to play the game out. They're just trying to test your character and see what you're really made of. But our confidence can be so easily knocked by what other people say. And our enemy knows that in times of trouble, when we are facing uncertainty and difficult times, he knows that if he can just chip away at our confidence, if he can just chip away and erode that confidence of who we are in Christ Jesus, if he can chip away at our confidence in the promises that we know that God has spoken over our lives, he knows that we become easy targets. And so our confidence is key. Our confidence in who we are in Christ Jesus, our confidence in the promises that God has spoken over our lives is absolutely key. And so I want to just pick a couple of things out of these verses this morning. The first thing is this. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says, do not throw away your confidence. Do not throw away your confidence. How do we throw away our confidence? How, how do, what, what does it look like to throw away our confidence? Well, I believe it's this. You see, when life is going well, when life is good and, and there aren't many problems, it's so easy to declare these faith-filled promises over our lives, that we are more than conquerors, that, that, that we are the head and not the tail, that God is for us and not against us, that we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And these promises just roll off the tongue. But when 
problems start to come about, when life gets more difficult, when we are faced with challenges, sometimes those promises, they don't roll off the tongue quite so easily. They're not easy, so, as easy to declare over our lives. In fact, it becomes difficult to actually believe some of these promises that we have spoken about and we believed in. And so throwing our confidence away really amounts to this, that our faith begins to get shaken and our faith begins to diminish and we start to not trust what God has spoken over our lives. But the writer of Hebrews says this, that we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. We don't belong to those who shrink back, but we are those who have faith. And God wants us to have faith. When we are faced with situations that we don't understand, when we are in times of trouble, just like we are now, God wants us to come with confidence and faith in who he says we are. He wants us to have faith in the promises that he has spoken over our lives. See, the reality is this, that the promises don't change. That our God doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is the he is the author and perfecter of our faith, and he does not change. And when we go through difficult times, when, when challenges come around, I want, to, I want you to understand this, that God is still on the throne, that he is still the God in heaven who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-seeing. He is the same God. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That does not change. It is only our circumstances that change. And I want you to hold on to that today, that we cannot give our confidence away. We can't allow our faith to be shaken. Our confidence is absolutely key. 1 Corinthians 15 says this, But thanks be to God, because he gives us glory through victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. You see, when you know who you belong to, you will not easily be shaken. When you know who you belong to, when you know the promises that God has spoken over your life, your faith will not be shaken and you won't easily give up your confidence. So let me encourage you today. Yes, we are facing some times of uncertainty. Yes, we are going through some difficult times that we don't really understand. But I want you to hold on to your confidence in who Christ is. I want you to hold on to the confidence and the promises that God has spoken over your life because he is with us every step of the way. The second thing is this, in Psalm 27, David says this, I remain confident of this, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will remain confident that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But let me just tell you this, that when David said those words, his life wasn't going particularly well. In fact, David's life was completely chaotic. When we read the Bible, it tells us that when David says these words, that there were things going on around him that he had no control over. It says that there was war breaking out all around him. It says that he was besieged by his enemies. It says that the wicked were pursuing him. And it says things like the people were undermining his character, telling lies about him. And the words it uses is this, that they were spouting malicious accusations against him. And yet in the midst of all of this, David says... I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I was watching the, the news just the other day. And the news is full at the moment of all of the, the bad stuff that's going on surrounding the coronavirus. And they were interviewing this one man, 92 years of age. Of course, he falls into that category of those that are at high risk. But when I listened to this man, I was just so filled with faith. This 92-year-old man, he says this, that this has the potential for great things. He said, this has the potential to draw our communities together and to change our nation for the better. And when I heard those words, I thought, wow, in amongst all of this chaos that is going on, amongst all of the negativity that's being spoken at the moment, this one man, 92 years of age, comes out with this faith-filled statement, just like David, that I will see goodness. That even in the midst of all of this trouble, I will see goodness. And I want to ask you today, what is it that you see when there are troubles? What is it that you see when things are coming against us? What is it that you see when life doesn't seem to be going to plan? Do you just see the problem or do you see a great opportunity for God to do, to do good? Do you focus on the mountain in front of you or do you see a way that God can shine even more brightly in our world? 
Do you see an opportunity for God's goodness even in the difficulties? You see, David chose in that moment to believe that his God was bigger than his circumstances. In that moment, he made a choice. He chose that I am not going to be distracted by my circumstances. I'm not going to listen to the lies of the enemy, but actually I'm going to trust that even in this, I am going to see the goodness of God. I don't want to ask you again, what is it that you see? You see, even though David was living the reality of his problems, he chose to see the goodness of God. You know, whenever Jesus saw problems, he always saw them as an opportunity. When Jesus saw the hungry, he fed them and he preached the gospel. Whenever Jesus saw those who were sick, he healed them and he preached the gospel. Whenever he saw those people that were worried or scared, he came and he comforted them and he preached the gospel. You see, Jesus didn't just see the problem. He saw an opportunity, an opportunity to preach life and hope, an opportunity to reveal the goodness and the love of God. And I want to ask you today, when we see these problems, when we come against the difficult times, are we just going to see the problem or are we going to see the opportunity for God's goodness to shine out so brightly in our communities and in our nation? God is a good God, and he is not hindered or stopped by what goes on in our circumstances. God wants to reveal his goodness and his love. So let me ask you, what do you see in the opportunities that God brings? Church, let's be a people that even in the difficult times, we see an opportunity to be a blessing to others. We see an opportunity to do good. We see an opportunity to share our faith. We see an opportunity to encourage someone, to build someone up. We've got to see the opportunity, even in the difficulties. And finally, this, let me ask you, what do you hear? Psalm 27, verse 14, David says this, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And I love the way that 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 command to be strong and to take heart, I love the way that it's encapsulated both sides by wait for the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And what does that really mean? You know, I think what it really means is this, is to, to listen to what God is saying in the situation. Listen to what God is saying. And let me encourage you, over these next few days or weeks or however long it is, you know, the chances are that we are going to be spending more time indoors. But let me encourage you, don't waste that time. Make sure you're spending that time in the Word of God. Make sure you're, you're, you're spending time in the presence of God, listening to what He is saying to you. And then acting accordingly acting in faith, allowing God to use you, allowing God to use you to be a light shining in your neighborhood, reaching out to your neighbors, reaching out to those around you. God wants to do good, even in these difficult times. We have a God who's so amazing. And I want to encourage you, let's not be a people who listen to the the, the, the doom that is so prevalent on our Facebook pages and social media and the news, but let's be a people who see the goodness of God. Let's be a people who hear what God is saying. And then let's be people who go out and do what God has called us to do, to bless people, to encourage people. Church, I'm so thankful that we have a God who loves us so much. And I believe that at this time, we have an incredible opportunity to shine the light of Christ communities. I believe that God is going to give us incredible opportunities if we would just come with faith and not fear. If we would hold on to our confidence, I believe that God is going to use us in incredible ways. So just because we can't physically meet together at this moment in time, let's continue to encourage one another. Let's continue to build one another up. Let's continue to pray for each other. And let's believe that God is going to do something incredible in our nation. You know, maybe just as Keely said at the beginning of this service, maybe this is your first time, your first experience of church. But I just want to tell you that, you know, 16 years ago, I realized that I didn't have any confidence. No confidence. I, I, I had a front and I had some bravado, but actually it was, there was no real confidence in me. But then I heard about a God who loved me so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for me, that I might find real life. And I might find real confidence, not based on who I am, but based on who God says I am. And I want to give you an opportunity this morning just to respond to the, to the message of Jesus Christ, that he loves you so much that he gave his life on a cross, that you might know life and life in all of its fullness. 
And I'm just going to say a very simple prayer. And right now, wherever you are, whether you're on your own or whether you're sitting with your family, if you want to respond to that message and know the love of Jesus Christ and know that he has a plan and a purpose for your life, why don't you just say this prayer with me? Father God, I thank you that you love me so much. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die for me. Lord, I'm sorry for all the things that I've done wrong. And right now I turn away from those things and I turn towards you. And I ask that you would come into my life by the power of your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. Wow, wasn't that incredible? Such a great message. Perhaps you have been watching or listening to this and you have made a decision today to give your life to following Jesus. The way you can respond to this message is by going to our website, thenetchurch.co.uk. Scroll to the bottom of that page. There's a section that says contact us. You can type your name, your email, and where it says message, you simply need to put, I said yes. Once you've clicked submit, one of our team will get in touch with you about next steps and inviting you to our future events. I'm getting to know you guys now. It's a great time where you can get to know a bit more about our church, our vision, our values, and who we are. Let me remind you, church, or let me let you know, next Sunday we have a special event online, but we are going to be doing a Ask the Pastor Anything, which means if you have a question uh, via our Facebook, uh, you can ask a question and ask and our pastors will answer it. This is a great time. Uh, we'll be dealing with practical things about how you can help your neighbors, those around you during this season. That's not scary at all, is it? Ask the pastors anything. So do text in, DM, Facebook. Um, you can ask us any questions. And we have a limited time, and we'll get through as many as we can. But you can contact us for anything. Although we're not gathering together, we're still the church. So if you have needs, if you just want us to pray about something, then use all of the social media, all of the email, all the information on the contact us so that we can stay in the loop and we can make sure that, that everyone is still connected. We may not physically be together, but because of what Jesus Christ has done, we, the church, are together. Let us remind you, this Tuesday, the 25th of March, 7.45 on Facebook Live, you can access that via both our Net Church Facebook pages, Net Church Dartford, and Net Church uh, City Born Facebook pages. We are going to come together, we are going to pray, and it is going to be a great online prayer experience. Roy is with the National Leadership Team today, so he is not with us, but he is with us in spirit. He will definitely be part of Church Online next week. And we've set up a new Net Kids Facebook page so, so that our children also don't miss out. And Andrew, you're going to be doing something for the youth as well, aren't you? Yeah, we need you to know uh, that we have some Google Hangouts coming towards every 11 to 18-year-old that is connected to the life of Net Church. So watch out for that. There'll be details published very, very soon. And I understand Andrew and Ellis are going to do a TikTok challenge. TikTok challenge is coming to a screen near you, so watch out for that. Um, and uh, I'm particularly nervous about that. But it's going to be great. It's I can dance. Amazing. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Well, I hope you have a great Sunday together. Don't, don't uh, miss Tuesday. It's going to be fantastic. Welcome. And I hope you really enjoyed your first Net Church online. And make sure that you join our The Core Facebook Live on Tuesday. It's going to be fantastic. See you soon. See you soon.